Welcome back folks. It's been a while since I posted another video to the YouTube channel, so I appreciate your patience and as always your continued interest in my content. All right, so we're going to talk about liquidity. I'm going to try to make this as brief as I possibly can. I tend to go overboard sometimes with insights and commentary, but I'm going to try to do it as short and concise as I possibly can, which invariably will always inspire questions, concerns, it will create gaps in your understanding, and that's normal, okay? Just know that it's meant for you to investigate on your own study, because I'm going to frame it in that capacity, so that way you know, while it's not just perfectly form-fitted for this example, students of mine for a long period of time uh, will hear certain things that I've talked about in passing in other commentaries and other YouTube series videos that you can find on this channel. I am not a pattern trader in the sense that I'm looking for, as it's commonly referred to as a trading pattern, like a harmonic pattern, okay, like a bat or a Gartley or um, a Fibonacci sequence. We're not looking for those things. So while I may reach for Fibonacci to show a level of projection and maybe show and highlight a, an area that is visually representing a valuation that would be undervalued or overvalued or in the sense that it's overbought oversold without using an oscillator okay we're looking at specific ranges so i'm going to touch a little bit on my l7 ranges uh, specifically in this lesson it's going to be a seven range example uh, and Again, it's not trying to teach you everything because there's no way I could do this, but it's also one more illustration of my, I haven't ran out of yeast. Okay, this baker has a lot of yeast and I can continue to teach for decades in the future and still not run out of content because I understand the algorithm. Now, what I'm gonna show you today would be normally reserved for students that are in my mentorship, but I want you to appreciate the level of systematic delivery of price why it does what it does and try to just simply suspend your belief system on any other model or school of thought like if you're a supply and demand you know follower or if you're an elliott wave trader or a harmonic trader if you trade uh, market profile it, it, all those things just for a moment try to put that to the side and try not to lean on any of your logic just for a moment okay during the time of this recording just suspend all belief in that i'm not saying believe this wholeheartedly but i want you to just listen to it and then go into your charts and you'll find it okay so all right so we're looking at the dollar cad and this is a pair admittedly i don't trade a lot but if i don't get a setup in euro dollar or pound dollar i will sometimes resort to trading this pair or the aussie dollar Okay, so so I just want to toss that you know the little disclaimer out there. I'm not actively trading dollar cat a lot, but I want you to think about some general themes here. Again, I mentioned the L7 range theory, and it's basically trading inside the range. I'm gonna frame a range for you so that we can see a little bit of the context that's required, but most of the things I'm gonna show you here are pretty simple and straightforward and it's not hard. It's not about moving parts, but there are very specific rule-based ideas that need to be considered when you look and study at old data. And you'll see that this occurs. When we're looking at liquidity, okay, the easiest way to determine that is anything that would reside above a short-term high or an intermediate term high now you might look at this area here and say, which one's the high? Well, this candle is slightly higher than all of them, but whenever I see multiple candles or multiple levels that look very close to one another in height or in depth in terms of the the lows, if we're looking at, if we're considering the opposite in terms of looking for sell side liquidity, buy side liquidity rests above old highs. Now it can come in the form of these areas like this where it's relative equal highs, okay? that's one of the concepts that I use to frame the idea and understanding of liquidity. Now, liquidity can be formed on the basis of a single point of reference like this high 
or this high or this high or it could be a collection of relatively equal highs or relatively equal lows like this there this would be considered relative equal lows in my school of thought this is relative equal highs in my school of thought this is a single buy side liquidity pull old high this is a single buy side liquidity pull short term high these things okay are not required for a label sense it's just i'm showing you the contrast between the two but generally anything above an old high would be buy side liquidity that means there's buy orders up there now as a new trader that sounds a little alien it doesn't make sense who would be wanting to buy up there because your books are telling you buy low so high there's always traders that are going short or traders that want to buy on a breakout that goes above that so that's the context of why that's buy side liquidity and I teach it from a institutional perspective. I'm not looking at it in terms of saying, you know, this is a resistance level. I'm teaching that this is an area where there are willing buyers up there. And that perception of price action, once you start adopting that and looking at price with that view, your opinions, your bias, your analysis will slowly start to migrate away from away from the retail logic that all of us are indoctrinated with when we first come into trading that's a normal thing but statistically proven if you look at all of the retail logic that's available to us why is it that 90 percent of the traders lose money it's because the logic is flawed okay so if it's flawed what is the common denominator as to why retail logic fails more times than it wins now, i'm not saying it can't win i'm not now i'm not saying that retail traders always lose and i'm not saying that a retail trader can't be profitable even using retail logic but they have to make a departure from all things retail at some point they have to inject their own experience into the analysis and that experience is going to be a byproduct of looking at things experientially and seeing okay i've learned this pattern in the books i've seen this author i've seen this you know educator or trader guru mention this idea but i've seen in this instance when that pattern's there it fails because of other things that i didn't learn in other books and you're gonna have these epiphanies that's experience that you can't just get from a book I can't transpose all of my experience. I can talk about things that I learn experientially, like what I'm going to show you here. But it's important for you to understand that the main common denominator is the markets are manipulated. And they're manipulated not on a random basis, but they're manipulated with a rule based structure. So I'm going to give you a little bit of the details and how you can start looking for these types of signatures in price. So if you look at this dollar CAD, we have an old low here and price has rallied up. Now, retail logic states that we have this low as a support level. Why? Because price moved away from there. We don't go into describing why it would have turned there from a retail trader. They just deem it as well. That's support because why? If price hits it and repels then it's a support level okay that might be simple enough for you to subscribe to i don't look at like that i look at it as okay there is now engineered liquidity now what does that mean that means that the market has turned on a dime here and rallied higher i see this as a liquidity pool of sell side orders okay sell side liquidity anyone that would have an order below that would be a seller they want to sell why would they want to sell below that because anyone that's long here or even chasing price they're going to look back to this level and feel confident that well it bounced there before so even if it starts to come down which may be very uncomfortable for them they have belief and faith and confidence that their books have indoctrinated them into believing that this is a level that should prevent price from going lower and i used to think like that until I lost thousands of dollars <laughs> and then it quickly dawned on me that I'm probably not following the right things so I want you to think about that low with the target or bullseye of 
the price wanting to go down to that level to attack the liquidity that rests below that low. Now, it may take months before it gets to this low, but if it gets to this low, this is what I want you to start looking at. And it doesn't only work on daily charts. This works on hourly charts. It works on four hour charts. It works on weekly charts. Okay, so it's important that you know that this liquidity idea I'm teaching you here is just part of the framework. But we can see eventually on the 9th of November, price trades down and goes below that low. This is an important event. When this day runs below this low, it's a crucial event algorithmically because what it's doing is it's going into a pool of liquidity. Now, we don't know with any absolute assurity that what I'm going to outline here is going to unfold, but I'm going to give you the things you'd look for to build confidence that it is likely to. And you'll see by going through your own charts how fast you can see these scenarios developing. We're going to go down to an hourly chart and study this fractal where it goes below this low here. I'm going to release information to you that would otherwise not be shown on my YouTube channel. So let's go over to the hourly chart now. All right, so here is the hourly dollar CAD chart. Now, right away, it probably doesn't look like much to you, okay? But I'm going to add the annotations in a moment, but I want you to take a look at some of the things without having any scribbles, any kind of annotations or markings or labels on the chart. Just let me flesh it out for you a little bit and then we'll throw the lipstick on the chart. You should be able to see this high and this low as a important price range. Now, what makes it important? It's the most dominant price range in this portion of price action. So whenever I'm looking at price, I look for clear discernible price ranges. When the range is clearly defined, as you can see here, what I do is I want to look for reference points based on measurements that are very generic. Okay, so in other words, I want to know what this high is here on this candle, and I want to know what the low of this candle is. Now, we're looking at this with the expectation that we're anticipating a run below that, but we don't know if it's going to continue. We wait for something to occur, which I'll outline here. And then once it happens, it gives us framework for short-term bias and where the withdrawal and liquidity is going to be in an opposing order. In other words, we see a, an attack on sell side liquidity with this day here. If something occurs, as I'll outline, that will be your green light to anticipate opposing buy side liquidity to be taken. Okay, so the concept I'm showing you here is purge and revert. Okay, purge and revert. All right, so when we look at liquidity, you want to be able to look at it on the basis of daily highs and lows. Now, when you look at daily highs and lows, you can add period separators to your chart, like tradingview.com allows you to do. I'm not sure why it takes so long to load up like that, but there it is. <laughs> but if you put the period separators on trading view this is the levels that you're going to get now i'm not going to argue that what i'm going to show you is better or that you can't use this either i'm just teaching you the way i look at it okay so if you're here on my channel that more or less indicates that you're interested to see how i think about it you may not subscribe to everything i say in fact i would counsel you not to do that there's things I'm going to say in this video and maybe in other videos that will be offensive to you because you are holding fast to your 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 logic, your system, your your method. And if it's profitable, don't allow me to change your mind about something that may be working for you. But if you can take something from the things I'm going to show you here and glean insight that may improve upon what you're already doing, that's really my only intention here. OK, but I, it, it will be better if you could suspend all of the previous ideas that you have about price okay and, and looking for things i don't do it like this okay so what i do is i look at the midnight to midnight time frame and i delineate my session breaks like that so it'll look like this okay so all of my vertical lines here are midnight to midnight new york time once this low which is highlighted with this line here that's that old daily low and we see that run below the old daily low here. That is a purging of liquidity. 
Now, once this purge occurs, we want to see the day of that purge. We want to start looking backwards. Okay. Uh, and other video series and other videos and other commentaries I've done with Forex and, and trading technical analysis concepts and such, you'll hear this repeat three days. Okay. I use a three day range of look back. Okay. If you look for the last three days, you'll have all the liquidity pools you need to make money. You'll have all the liquidity pools to target for your trades. You'll have all the liquidity pools that you could use for trade entries. And you don't need anything other than that. You don't need to have a IPTA 20 day look back period. You don't need to have a 60 day. You don't need to have a 40 day. You don't need to look back on your weekly charts and see how many times something hit a level 14 different times to have any faith in it. The market does not look back 20 years ago. The market does not look back five years ago. Okay. It looks at predetermined price levels and that's the reason why the algorithms operate the way they do. And what do I mean by that? For some of you that are not technically inclined or familiar with computer programming, uh, for those that are, this will make a lot of sense to you, but those that aren't, I'm gonna ch uh, just bear with me for the folks that are technically inclined. I'm not trying to talk down to those individuals that aren't. I'm just trying to be as inclusive as possible and comprehensive. So that way you understand what I'm saying here. So it doesn't go right over your head because I can clearly see there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be confused by this lesson. But if you just take it for what I'm going to show you here and then go into your own charts, you'll see what I'm referring to and then it'll click. So the day of the purging, in other words, the day it runs below that old daily low. When that happens, we count that as day one. Okay, that's day one of that event of purging. We wait to see if it goes higher and reverts, not reverses. Okay, I'm not saying reversal. I'm saying revert. What is it reverting to? It's reverting to buy side. So it draws to sell side liquidity and that's counted as day one. That is day one, day two, day three. That's our look back on the day of liquidity purge. So the day it occurs, you look back three days. Now, inside the range prior to the liquidity purge, you got to look back and see where is that range. Now, you could have looked at this, say, if you're looking at a 15 minute chart, maybe you would have seen it as this high to this low. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You would be just using five minute charts to get the same premise I'm showing you here on an hourly chart. It's all scalable, folks. The things that I teach are very friendly to making it your own. I don't mean that by saying, take my content, rename it and put a YouTube video up. Okay, that's not that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is it allows you the freedom and flexibility because if the method and concepts are legitimate, it will allow anyone, any number of people to come in and form their own model and which doesn't seem logical to a new trader or someone that's a neophyte, someone coming to this for the first time like it was for me, there only is one way of doing it successfully. And I've learned, it took me about six years to get there. But when I first started in 1992, it took me six years before I realized that there isn't one way to be profitable. There is a myriad of ways, but there are certain things that you need to understand that puts the odds more in your favor than if you didn't know it and the adversities that you have and suffer through are really avoidable. Okay. You have to, at some point you have to admit that these markets are 100% controlled. They're, they are, you know, we have uh, breakers in the marketplace that says once it trades this much trading halts for a little while. Okay. Isn't that a measure of control? Sure it is. And it's not limited to that. They know where these markets are going to go. They're, they're driven there. Okay. And this is an example of engineered liquidity. Engineered liquidity is where they run down, take those sellers out of the marketplace. For what purpose? It allows individuals that are on the smart money side of things, informed traders, okay, large institutional traders, bank traders, and they will use that liquidity to be a counterparty to their buying. So it is a way of looking at price and saying, okay, I don't need to have an overbought, oversold indicator. I don't need to have a divergence in an oscillator. I don't need to have harmonic on my side. I'm just looking at where liquidity is. 
And if we see an old daily low taken, that is a significant pool of liquidity. There's lots of orders below an old low, like I indicated on the daily chart before transitioning to the hourly. But this event where it goes below that low, it's being paired with smart money that wants to buy. Now, right away, some of you are looking at this, oh, this is all hindsight. I'm teaching it through hindsight, but I promise if you go through your charts, the things I'm showing you here, they repeat over and over again, which is a basis for a model. This could be your unique trading model. And it's not really shown anywhere in any of my content. I don't even teach this even in mentorship. What I'm showing you here is fresh, but it's using concepts that I've touched on even in this free YouTube channel and in my mentorship. So I'm blending both of the worlds that are inside my mentorship and outside. I'm bringing them together with something for free right here so that way you can gain a greater understanding of what the markets are doing and why they're doing it. If this is true, if my assumption and my argument that I pose to everyone that comes to me, if these markets are not 100% manipulated by an algorithm, then the things I'm gonna show you here won't hold up. If price runs below an old low, that sell side liquidity has been purged only if we start to move away from it. Now, it might be a sweep on stops and then it continues higher, but if it runs below it and then goes back above a specific level, what level would that be? Well, we wanna look at the day that it occurs and it runs the liquidity out. So this day here, I've annotated the daily high. If that high is traded to and through, that is a market structure break only on the basis of a liquidity purge now it does not mean it's 100 percent successful it just means that from an algorithmic standpoint if we're looking at logical steps of, of processes we look for this if this occurs then we look for this if that occurs then we look for this and if that occurs we look for that so it's a matter of looking at a recipe for a model that would be unfolding dynamically so if this day's high, when it takes the liquidity out, is broken on the upside here, I don't need it to close above it. That's not, I don't need that because the narrative is it ran below an old low for liquidity. If it's gonna go higher, the algorithm will start its macro and macro is a short order of processes that begin and, and go step by step. And it's like a small little algorithm in a sense. And the large algorithm that creates and controls price action, it's just a bunch of smaller little algorithms that tie together. And it's very complex, obviously, but just know that you can reduce it to something as simple as what I'm showing you here. It may not seem simple right now because I'm a little wordy, but I need you to understand there's certain things that are at play here that cause these things, okay, that occur. So the run below the liquidity, if that day's high is broken, we see it here then we can start looking for buy side liquidity for the algorithm to revert to here's the previous day's high that's all these little blind segments are i'm looking at the daily high that is between 12 and 12 midnight each day so this day's liquidity is tape, you know, taken out but it's a break in market structure on the basis and narrative that we've taken sell side liquidity out so now, once it does this, where do we anticipate price going to? Well, you first have to revert back to this high and this low. So we're looking at how much we're gonna retrace from this low into this high. It may not ever get back to that high. And then here's the thing, you don't need to have it go there, but you need to know where the midpoint is. And that's what this level is here. So that's basically equilibrium between the high and the low of that obvious range. Now the algorithm knows this range high and it knows the low it forms here. The midpoint is equilibrium. So what we're doing is we wanna look at three days back as far as, in terms of time, the liquidity above the daily highs as far back as day three, and the filter is the midpoint or equilibrium of the range that it's traded in prior to the liquidity being purged. Now, I already know some of you, you know, some of your ears are smoking right now. You're thinking, man, this is too much. I need a trend line right now. Somebody tossed me a moving average. ICT is killing me here. <laughs> Trust me, okay? When you watch this video a few times and go into your charts, you'll see it. It's there. But the range, 
needs to be filtered okay once we get to the the 50 point or 50 percent level of the high and the low that's all i really use a fibonacci for folks you know i'm just looking for equilibrium and anything at or above it in my mind is expensive in other words it's a premium market so it's going to require a whole lot more for me to be a buyer and many times it will negate me being a buyer but it will not disqualify a long entry that I have maybe entered and I did not. So we are clear now. I didn't take a trade on this. I'm just showing you conceptually how you can study and see these things going forward. But you can use these ideas to frame the logic on holding long positions or partials to get to this level and then day three in this case here. So what do I mean by that? We have the high, the low, the logic behind the run on stops on the sell side liquidity raid. Okay, so this is purged if we get a run above the day of the purging. And then we start looking at the previous day's highs. And above that is going to be liquidity until we get to the 50% level of the range. Once it does that, we are in an iffy. Like it, it might not continue going higher. It could, but it might not. But if we have day three still in close contention with this level, in other words, it's not that far above it. And it's not a lot of range in terms of where the equilibrium is and where the previous day or day three's high would be, that buy sell liquidity would be potentially attacked. So we can see each day on the 10th of November, we had the break above the old high here. Market structure is broken. So now we're thinking buy side liquidity is gonna be the next draw. That means your bias on a short term is look for this high to be tapped and maybe this one we don't need it to go all the way back up here okay we don't need it to go all the way back up to the last up close candle which is a bearish order block okay you're looking at high probability high probability this is what this is high probability short-term trading so if we see that they're all on buy side liquidity is the context that the algorithm is going to be operating under they've already done the damage by going down Traders are going to be looking for a continuation. They're going to be looking for bear flags. They're going to be looking for bearish Gartleys. They're going to be looking for bearish, you know, anything to get them short. And supply and demand traders are going to be looking for supply zones to go short at. Traders that use simple support and resistance levels are going to be looking at, okay, well, we bounced here. Let's draw that out in time. And it might sell off here. And when it starts to go down like that, they get really excited you thinking like this are thinking well we have a break in market structure your eye goes here where their eyes looking for this level to be touched again because it's a support level you see the paradigm shift that's taking place already in a short little video now this feels long for some of you but it's a very short window of time that i'm framing a mode of logic that repeats all the time on all time frames but if we're going to use it in this context using a look back of three days then it's framed on a daily chart and it can be reversed obviously if we're looking for runs above old daily highs but look back is three days equilibrium is the high the low split in the middle so all i did was to get that level you put a fibonacci on this high to this low and whatever the 50 level is you annotate that on your chart so each day after this day you are looking for this pool of liquidity to be traded to and this pool of liquidity to be traded to and once it does that high probability goes away it changes okay so the algorithm goes into a different mode of delivery it can become a deeper retracement or it could accelerate into that high that's not what i'm going to teach here i'm not teaching that that and i know some of you are already oh, say 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 you're holding back no it just requires a whole lot more to teach and i don't have the time for it and you wouldn't want to sit through it anyway <laughs> so each day this high you know being broken of this creates the market structure shift buy side liquidity here if we draw that out in time and we're going to draw this one out in time okay and this one here because it's above the three 
and it's the last one. So if we continue with that bias, you know, we'll see if there's any continuation of that logic reaching for buy side liquidity. All right, so now we have buy side liquidity here, buy side liquidity here, and buy side liquidity here. And we're gonna look at the 11th of November. And we're gonna look at that on a 15 minute chart. So let's drop down to the 15 minute time frame and look at this here and how it attacks these blue levels. All right, so here is the 15 minute time frame of that dollar CAD. And we can see the short little lines are always gonna be individual daily highs. The elongated blue lines are gonna be those old liquidity pools that we're looking for price to trade up into. So on the 11th, we have price trading in here. And again, all I'm annotating here is this candle's high, which makes that high. We don't use the, the midnight high when we're looking at all this data here, if this midnight candle makes a higher high, we don't call the 11th daily high that one because it's really technically the 12th. So we're you're using only the data that makes the individual day prior to midnight in New York time. So the highest high and the lowest low, that's what we're looking for. But as soon as we get to midnight, everything starts new. That's a new range for the day. So we have equilibrium here. So we know the price could jump to that or at least this level here. And this level is the initial one because it's below equilibrium and it's the old liquidity pool on day two. Look at how price trades back down in to this run here. Isn't this an optimal trade entry? Watch. Here's your swing low. All right, so here is the Fibonacci laid on that price swing. I'm using the bodies of the candles. Again, not using the wicks and the tails because the bulk of the volume is in the bodies. So it's gonna give you a pure read on where the buy signal is gonna be, all right? It doesn't mean that you can't use the wicks and the tails. It just means when I'm looking for optimal trade entry, I prefer to use the bodies of the candles because it will give you a pure read on the entry. If I'm looking at ranges, okay, like what I outlined on the hourly chart, and showed you where the high was and the low was and then did the 50%. When I'm looking at finding equilibrium, I will use the, the wicks and the tails, okay? I get a lot of questions, you know, by way of email and people get confused. You know, why does ICT um use the wicks and sometimes the bodies? He's not consistent, it confuses me. I just answered that for you, okay? The bodies are gonna give me the pure entry point. The wicks and the tails are used just for measurement of ranges. Okay, so if I'm going to look for a pattern of entry, I'm using the bodies. If I'm looking for equilibrium measurements, then it's always going to be wicks and tails. Okay, um, when it comes to order blocks, that's a different theory, which I won't touch on here. But again, take for what you get. So we have the optimal trade entry in here, it trades down to that, and we have a standard deviation of negative one half, and it overlaps basically with that old liquidity pool. And then we have it trading up to equilibrium here at negative one. We have negative two just above the old liquidity pool. And we have negative 2.5, which is with this new liquidity pool on Thursday before Friday's trading. And the market trades there on Friday. And again, we have price trading down initially, creating a Judas swing. What's the context? we're looking for price to revert back to buy side liquidity because it's already done its job over here, running that old daily low. So each day we're looking for clues if it's going to go to the buy side liquidity. Each day it's gonna be reaching for a specific level of liquidity. It's not guesswork, it's very easily discerned what is the previous highs where above that high can price reach to? Then price will start stair-stepping towards that. It's not respecting trend lines. It's not respecting patterns. It's respecting where the liquidity is, okay? The market's gonna go where there are orders. It has no regard or respect for anybody's trading pattern, okay? The market's gonna go where there is counterparty, period. And if there isn't enough counterparty there, the market will create it. It'll engineer it. It'll run up, blow out equal highs. It'll blow out equal lows and it'll change sentiment on the basis of that event. Here we have the market trading above the equilibrium, trading to an old liquidity pool and trades back down. Now, we still have 
time in the week and it can still continue. But isn't this an optimal trade entry as well? And a breaker. We have a low, a high, a lower low. Use the highest up close candle. I'm just adding this in here just for bonus, no extra charge. <laughs> we have the body right there. So when the market trades down into that, that's your bullish breaker and your order block. Down close candle before this displacement. Optimal trade entry, we'll add that. Again, watch what I'm doing, I'm putting it on the bodies. We get above Thursday's liquidity pool here, not by much, but we have a standard deviation of negative one that with these equal highs here or relative equal highs, we could potentially see it try to get up there and, and snag that. I'm not saying it will because we're above equilibrium, but that is how I would look at it. Now, if this was say, say this was Tuesday, Wednesday, and we were still in an active trading week, then I would still be hunting longs and I would look for standard deviation of negative one or negative one and a half because it would be expanding above the relative equal highs and I would look for it for like 10, 20, 30 pips. And I would look for that type of thing to occur and try to attack that 132 big figure. That is not an analysis. I'm just saying that that's how I would use it if it were you know still in an active trading week. Now, what am I showcasing here? Am I just talking about hindsight and just trying to dazzle you with something that's obvious in the charts? Some of you might come away from this video with that opinion and you're free to have that. But those individuals that go into the charts and start looking at what I'm showing you here in its simplest short overview of what I just did here, you look for areas in the marketplace with old highs and old lows. And if the market trades down below it, wait to see if it wants to break the day it trades below it. In other words, this is the event day. If it trades above that, then we potentially have a market structure shift. So we start looking for previous day's highs and the liquidity that would be resting above it. Previous day's high with liquidity resting above it. You are not looking back three days every time a new day comes back and then finding that. We are looking at three days back counting day one of the purge on liquidity. That is how the algorithm reads it. How does it select which day, Michael? If there's an algorithm, how to do it? I'm telling you, this is one of the ways that it does it. It looks back three days. Now, why three days? You're probably asking, why is it three days, ICT? Well, there is, classically, there is a, and I'll have to show it to you like this. If you're looking at a chart and We're looking at an old low. I teach this, and this is really this is a fundamental truth that if you look at most turning points in the marketplace, you see some kind of depiction of a turning point like this in price. This would be like a swing low. Now, if you're using things like with MT4, they have a, a, a fractal indicator. I don't, I'm not, a fan, I've never been a fan of that. And even if you look back at the stuff I did when I stepped out on the stage, just to teach on Forex in 2010, um, I, I went against that whole MT4 fractal indicator because it requires five candles and five candles could grief the moves already done. Uh, we're anticipating the lowest candle to go into something like this. Generally, that's how I take, as I teach it, there's something down there that we're anticipating. The next candle, if it has a higher low, right away, that's the turning point for me. So we look back three days because this event, like it does here, when it runs below that old daily low that's indicated by this line here, when that occurs, it might not just be a one day event. It might be a two day event where it goes even deeper. So when it creates that, we count that as day one, two, and three. And we identify that liquidity on those days. If it goes lower, I'm still going to refer back to the original day three. It just gives us one more day of potential liquidity it may reach for. But it's three day on the basis that it creates turning points. And just like 
everything else I teach, if you just reverse it and put this here, the swing highs form generally like this. We have a high, a higher high, and a candle that has a lower high. Now this candle's high might be lower than this candle's high, or it could be higher. The real point is that there's a candle that has a lower high to the left, a lower high to the right. And that's usually a classic swing high. Swing low, again, has a higher low to the left, a higher low to the right. And this could be a higher low than this candle, or it could be lower. It doesn't, that's not what we're really pressing here. There is logic behind what I'm showing you here. You can use other things for that, which is a completely different lesson, but for just a classification of a swing high, swing low for turning point basis, uh, this is what it graphically looks like most times. It doesn't always in, you know, appear like that, but on most cases it does look like that. And that's the reason why the logic is three days because the turning points generally form with that type of structure, all right? So your job, your homework, going forward using this information is to see how the market reaches for liquidity. I get a lot of questions all the time. How do you know what side of the market to trade on? Because if I could do that, ICT, if you could just teach me how to learn to be a buyer or seller, is it going to be an up day or a down day? I will be profitable. And I'm going to tell you, you're not correct in thinking that because there's other things that's going to get in the way. When you think you've scratched that itch, then you'll have 20 more that says, well, ICT talks about the candles and the wicks. And then you'll argue about that. When what I just gave you here, did I bring in commitment of traders reports? No. Did I bring in the traders trinity, which I don't even look at anymore? No. Did I talk about pivot points? No. Mitigation blocks? Nope. Did I teach catapult? Whiplash? Nope. There's lots of different patterns and there's lots of different ways that you can take small little samplings of the things I teach with the proper context and narrative and it becomes a complete model. You need to look at all of these days here with the times of day that I teach, which is the London open kill zone, the New York open kill zone, the London closed kill zone, and look how these patterns form. There's optimal trade entries in these days based on the logic that it's going to reach for the liquidity above here and here, period. It's structured, it's not contrived, it's not form-fitted because if you go back and look at every other event and try, here's the other thing, reverse it and look at how the market does when it trades above old highs. But here's the thing, you're going to, if you are going into this to find times where it fails, okay, if that's what you're trying to do right away, you're going to miss the lessons that it's going to show you by doing it with the investigative approach. In other words, does it show this logic? Because in future lessons, I'll touch on this again, and it'll be on my YouTube channel, but you need to first see this, okay? Anything, I mean, I can look at my order block theory and go in and find 50 examples where it would be viewed as failing if you just look at it from the perspective that YouTube people put up videos and they think they understand my order block theory. No, it's not complete. My mentorship has not exhausted that. You, you can always torture the data and if you manipulate it you know, hard and fast and long, long enough, it will confess to anything. But there has to be a logic in play. So let's go back in closing, take everything off and go to a daily chart. The market has consolidated for a long period of time in here. And we have this old low. When the market drives down below that, I don't care if it's gonna go up a little bit and then continue going lower because that's not a model I'm trying to frame here. I'm not teaching you long-term trading. I'm teaching you a short-term way of determining where the next draw on liquidity is going to be. Is it going to be aiming for the buy side or the sell side? Now, there are other ways to discern whether buy side is going to be attacked or sell side liquidity is going to be attacked. And that might be your model, but they all going to lean on general principles that are generic. And that means when we have a period like this in consolidation, this old low, if it runs below that, even if it will go lower, and I'm not saying it will or won't here, I'm just saying if it does, or if it will, or if it's more inclined to do so, all we're doing is looking at short-term liquidity to frame short-term intraday trades. That's all I'm, I'm posing that as a study on liquidity here. So I framed it on the basis of higher time frame liquidity pools, which is sell side here, 
short-term trading logic, algorithmic principles, understanding the open float where the market's going to attack a specific side of the marketplace until it gets to a specific threshold and then it becomes low probability. Now, obviously, if it trades higher and goes more, higher than I've outlined on that lower time frame, then that's a model outside the scope of what I'm showing you here. It does not reduce its effectiveness here. It does not mean that this is any less of a, a model and that longer term or intermediate term trading is better. It just means which would resonate more with you as the individual because I'm talking in a way that it allows the flexibility of the reader and viewer of my videos to see if it resonates with them. If it doesn't, I'm not offended. No mentor should be offended because the mentor should know that everything isn't always going to fall in the expectations and alignment with everybody's psychological makeup. You aren't always going to agree with everything I say. And the weak-minded individuals that come here and they, they are met with something that is against the grain of what they believe in, they just quickly dismiss the entire channel. And they really dismiss the likelihood of potentially picking up on some really amazing things for free that may make them a stronger trader. The ones that come here and they say, okay, that doesn't really resonate with me, but they go into their journal and say, all right, he, he, ICT mentioned this, 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 and here's my concerns about that and why I don't feel any gravitation towards that at the moment. So it's not killing the idea. It just means that you have observed something, you've recorded your observation, and you kept an open mind about it because something else in the future that you may come in contact with with this video or maybe you are joining the mentorship maybe you're not i don't care but you'll come in contact with another lesson that it will say oh that makes sense because i remember him talking about this other concept or this principle and how the markets deliver price and then it becomes a complete understanding about something that you immediately dismissed initially so always have an open mind don't be you know, close-minded to the idea of learning something that may be uncomfortable at first or it may feel too dry like this lesson could be viewed as this is really boring you know you could have said this in in five minutes yeah i could have said if the liquidity is taken below the old low look back three days and see if it goes to the buy side liquidity but that does not frame all the necessary logic that i gave you in this video okay try to try to reduce it down to what you think it should be said and then also lean on the things that I've also outlined in here that were important in terms of thresholds, what logic needs to take place, and understand also that you may have been able to watch other videos and you're more versed in the things that I've talked about in old videos. And that's usually what happens. People come, they watch the videos, and they are highly opinionated because they want to get to the next new stuff. But there are always new people coming in and if I talk about something, I get waves of emails if they're new. So I always like to try to sprinkle this within my videos to say, look, you know, you're not going to learn this in one video. And I can't encapsulate everything in one video because there's a lot of other subject matter that these things lean on. But I tried to reduce it to something that is scalable. You can see it, understand it, the logic, the things that the only moving parts is what I showed you here. Like I said, I'm not, I didn't require all the other things that I know and that you all have learned from me. You don't need all those things. And if you have a price action model, you know, the, the best price action models are the ones that can be reduced to the back of a business card. Okay. I actually did this on baby pips when I was active on their forum. I did an article and it was, uh, here's my business card. And I basically said, you know, you may have a lot of understanding about price and i believe i do and i believe my students do but those that are profitable can reduce the idea that they would use to frame a setup from beginning to end with money management and everything it could be reduced and written out on the back of a business card now my question to you is do you have it in your mind that learning here is going to require you more information that you cannot fit on the back of a business card because if that's what your expectation is, if that's what you're afraid of by you know, delving into this YouTube channel or even my mentorship, don't let that be a thing that is problem. It's not a, it's that's a normal fear and concern because there's a lot of information. But think of it like this. If you're going to be a doctor, you have to learn a lot about things 
in the body that may not be your specialty when you start practicing your medicine. You may be a foot doctor or a hand doctor, but you had to learn about the skeletal system on the, on the cranium, you know, the clavicle. You had to understand you know, the, the patella, the kneecap, all these things. They're not specific to the foot in the sense that anatomically that's the area that you're studying, but something that is occurring in the knee may be a real reason or root cause of the problem you're having in your foot. So when I teach, I teach an all-encompassing approach because I don't want any weaknesses at all. So I don't want anyone to think that coming here with all of the information that's available to you, that you're going to drown in the information and come out with nothing. Because you know, we could sit down here every single week and put one principle you know, on, on the back of a business card and say, here is a trading model. And this is all you need to do. Don't do anything outside of this. You won't get a trade every day. And that's also a problem. You're going to have people that want to have a trade every single day. And if that's the case, then you're a scalper at heart. You want to be a scalper. Okay, then focus on trading time of day with the logic I showed you here. Principles like this, where you need to know how the market is going to draw on buy side or sell side. And that gives you your internal intraday bias should you be buying and selling you don't care how the week's going to close you don't care what the trend's going to be over the next four days or the next three days what's the daily range going to expand in direction higher or lower that's all a scalper cares about and you can make money doing that you don't you can make money doing that that would be opposed to the long-term downtrend or uptrend on a daily chart and weekly chart and monthly chart because it's scalping so when you have these questions or concerns or if you read other people's opinions or watch their review videos and such, um, they all are entitled to their opinion. They all have their own view on me and other people, and that's fine. They're welcome to it, but it doesn't change or reduce the effectiveness of the things that I teach or that you learn here. Okay, So you have to be balanced about it and go into it with a proper mindset. And I've given you a structure here to go in and start studying, and you'll see that these things repeat. And as far as intraday scalping, intraday short-term trading, this is one of those little dandies that repeat a lot. But you have to have the context of where the market runs out liquidity on a higher time frame chart. Until next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.